Hello, my name is Albert, and I'll be talking about on combining fault tolerance and partial replication with causal consistency, joint work with Duke Serra, Joel and Tom, and Preguisa of Novalinx. Applications are typically created with a client server communication model in mind. For any client to operate on data, it communicates with a server, which will then be responsible to propagate operations to other clients. To ensure that the server itself is more scalable and fault tolerant, multiple server replicas can be used. In an attempt to even further reduce latency for clients to interact with the service, these server replicas are often geo-replicated throughout the globe. What such a deployment would not address is what happens when you have an application where clients are attempting to interact with each other directly and they're actually very close to each other. One way we can improve such a system is to let client devices communicate directly among each other. This ensures that operations which are to be sent from one client to another, instead of going th through from client to server to client, can go directly from client to client. This brings us to our system model. We'll have clients communicate directly with, with very low latency, and they'll have a local data store to ensure that they can operate locally even when disconnected from the server. Some Clients will still be connected to the server to ensure that data is stored at the server for durability in case that all clients disconnect from the network. The server also acts as a bridge for peers which are unable to connect to others. One thing we have to address in such a, net, in such a deployment is that client devices have very unreliable networks. This has an impact on a consistency model we can apply and the strongest model available under network partitions uh, is causal consistency. Additionally, as the client devices are resource constrained, for example, they don't have the same memory and uh, storage that a server replica could have, uh, clients do need to limit the objects that they actually have locally, so we need some form of partial replication. Ideally, such a replication mechanism does limit the objects every client has to replicate to the object that the application instance is actually interested in. For example, if client 1 is interested in objects A and B, it doesn't store the whole database, but it stores only objects A and B. Now this leads us to our goal. We'd like to have a data store where clients are replicas of the data, which can communicate directly among each other, while also communicating with the server to ensure durability. Consistency model would be causal consistency, and we'd like to have partial replicants the replication at the clients. When trying to implement this uh, data store, we encountered a problem for this scenario specifically. Let's assume we have a server which stores uh, every object, and we have two clients which are connected to each other, and a third client that's as isolated. Client 1 now executes two operations on the objects that it has, one on object B and then one on object A. There will be a dependency from the first operation to the second operation, so the operation on A depends on the operation on B. These operations will then be propagated to the network it's connected to, in this case only to client number 2. In our system we could implement this in two ways. First, the operation B isn't actually sent to client 2, or every operation is sent to client 2, but it can store the operation on B. Now let's imagine the user of client device number 1 drops his phone in a lake. Now client 2, if it attempts to connect to client 3, it'll send the operation that it has on A, but the operation on B has to be executed on the third client before executing A due to the causal dependency. But because client 2 doesn't store the operation on B, this dependency can never be solved. In fact, here there, there are two options. The first is that C2 didn't store or receive at all the operation on B, and thus, even if it creates any future operation, any such operation would depend on this uh, A, which would depend on B. And thus, it will never be able to synchronize with any other replica that has a uh, be in its local store. The alternative is that C2 did still store the operation on B, but this would be ignoring partial replication. Now this previous example maps directly to the theorem that we have in the uh, 
in the paper, which states that from causal consistency, partial replication, and indefinite replica failures, we can only have two. From this example, it's pretty easy to see that the theorem holds. But what's interesting is that if we, for example, forego causal consistency, we can let client 2 and client 3 communicate with each other, and we will have causal consistency within every object, but not among objects. If, for example, client 2 has to store everything before go partial replication, we can give causal consistency and still support uh, replicas failing forever. And last, if we assume that client 1 eventually returns, so failures aren't forever, then we can eventually synchronize client 2 with client 3. For an initial solution, we will have a separate data store locally to every client, which we'll call the dependency store. From the previous scenario where client 1 sends its operations to client 2, the operation on B, instead of being discarded or not received at all, would be stored in this local data store. Now, just as before, if client 1 fails and client 2 attempts to synchronize with client 3, it can send its operations on A to client 3, and it will also be able to solve the dependencies as its uh, extra data store has them stored locally. Now, there needs to be some form to clean up the dependency store, otherwise this just goes back to for application. As soon as you receive an operation for objects you're not interested in, they have to be kept forever. Now, this can be done with, for example, a stabilization mechanism, but these require every node to keep information on every other node in the system. And as our system model already includes a server, we're actually going to use it to implement a form of stabilization. Now this mechanism, which I'll call server-assisted garbage collection, will have the server propagating to every client in the network on operations that are durable. And this is done in the form of a version vector. We'll send pairs of replica ID and the number of operations it has observed throughout the peer-to-peer -peer network. And clients can discard any operation that's in their uh, dependency data store as soon as they're known to be durable at the server. And to show how this works, we'll have the previous scenario, the server which stores every object, and client 1 connected to client 2. These two clients will execute their operations, and client 1 will ex send them to client 2, but eventually they're also sent to the server, which will store every operation. Now what the server does is, two clients that connect to it, once in a while it'll send a version vector of all operations that it has observed. When clients receive such a version vector, for example here client 1 and client 2, receive that their operations that they have are already stored at the server, they can clean up their dependency store. In this case, client 2 would discard the operation on B. Now, just as before, client 1 fails and client 2 will attempt to synchronize with client 3. By sending its operation on A to client 3, this replica will see that it's missing a dependency on B. Now, there are two cases that can happen here. First is that client 2 didn't receive a version vector from the server yet, and thus it can uh, send the dependency directly because it didn't clean it up yet. And otherwise, it's sure that the server already has the operation because it received a version vector to discard it, and this client 3 can request this operation directly from the server. There are some sacrifices made here, and first is the durability mechanism actually propagates a version vector, which is in the order of the number of replicas in the system, which, when we're talking about clients, can be rather high. Additionally, when two clients attempt to synchronize with each other, it might be possible that they have to communicate with the server impacting availability. Now, this algorithm does have some interesting properties. For example, there's no need for every replica to communicate with every single other replica, and any pair of replicas can synchronize correctly because they can or deliver the dependencies or request them from the server. The propagation of the version vector from the server can also be adapted to suit application needs. We can send it every 5 seconds, every minute, every hour, and we can even send it somewhat in the past of the server to ensure that when two given replicas try to synchronize with each other, the chance that their missing dependencies which have to be obtained from the server is actually low. Additionally, interruption propagation of this version vector doesn't impact any safety or liveness guarantees, it just makes it so that clients have to store their dependencies for a while longer. 
Now, in terms of goals, we can implement causal consistency and we can deal with permanent replica failures of client devices. But in terms of partial replication, even though we're discarding operations that we have no interest in, we do receive every single operation. And in terms of availability, in some cases, if we're very aggressive with our garbage collection, then client replicas can only synchronize with each other if a server can be reached. Now notice that storing dependencies on operations that we have no interest in is something that only happens if you're connected to clients that have objects that you have no interest in. So when there's a great overlap in interest, we are very close to genuine partial replication. Now this is one of the aspects for future work, to explore workloads with, which have clear boundaries on such interest sets so that we can limit connections in our peer-to-peer -peer network to within a region of objects. Now to conclude this talk, we discussed a system model where clients are communicating with the server but also among each other for very low latency. They must keep a partial replica because they're limited in storage capacity and causal consistency is the strongest available model here due to the networking limitations. As these replicas can fail permanently, we came up with a theorem that states that from causal consistency, partial replicas and permanent replica failures, we can only address two. And our initial solution actually leverages the server replica, which is a uh, full replica, which doesn't fail forever, and use these to provide a notion of durability. And this way we could implement partial replicas and causal consistency and deal with permanent replica failures on client devices. Thank you.